Hey, this is JC and welcome to Small Brick City. In this video, we'll be doing another building a mock from scratch, where I'll try to build a building or a small building or a mock, which is my own creation in real time. This is the second project I'm doing. If you missed the first one, do check it out. It was a bachelor's pad or a small house. And you can check out the link in the card above or in the description below. For this project, I'm going to try another kind of building. So I'm not going for a house because I've done that already. I'm going for a place of business or an office of sorts. So I did think about this previously and I thought what would be interesting to do as an office or place of business. I didn't want to do anything that I've done before or I've done in my Lego city such as a diner or bakery. I wanted to do something that I had not built before and it's not that common in a Lego city as well. So I've decided to do an office for an interior designer or an interior design firm. I know that's highly specific, but basically I guess in a Lego city, you need construction, you need architects, and you need interior designers. So I thought an office for an interior designer will work well. Now this project is meant to be a learning guide, so I'm not building a full mock on a 32 by 32 stud base plate. I'll be using this 16 by 16 stud base plate. So this is really kind of a mock-up or a guide to an office building for interior designer. Of course, if I like the build, I can always expand it to the full 32 by 32 stud base plate or what I actually like, the 16 by 32 stud base plate. But the whole idea is to showcase a variety of techniques and just build it in real time and share my process as we go along. Now, I won't be using the same exact build techniques that I've done in the previous build because there's really no point. You can check out that video to see the techniques for that particular building. I'll be doing some new things for this build or at least new things that I've tried in several of my mocks in recent weeks and I'm going to apply it for this project over here. So the main thing that I'm working with for this particular building is I'm going to use a lot of glass. So these are going to be glass within frames. I've got the standard door frames and I've got these window frames as well. I'm choosing to do this because this is one way that you can save on bricks. Of course, you do need to invest in these door pieces or window frame pieces and the glass. However, when you use these glass panels or door panels, you actually save up the space for bricks. So if you don't have so many bricks, you can actually buy a couple of these frames in place of the bricks. You do get a very modern design. You get a, a lot of light into your mock. And if you have it on display, you can see the interior if you detail it as well. So I think that many pros in using these window frames. You save space, you save bricks, and you can see inside the build. But that's what I'm going to do for this particular project. I'm going to use a lot of these glass frames. So this is the base plate I'm going to use. It's green for a bit of grass feel, I guess, uh, if there's going to be space for some grass. Not much space, but maybe at least to give a bit of color to the build. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out where I'm going to place some of these frames. One of the things I did think about is to create some kind of tower. Not necessarily an office tower because uh, to build it high and big would take a lot of bricks. But I was thinking just to do a small column uh, made of glass so that it looks like some kind of design feature. I don't think there's space to put uh, office space but maybe there is maybe we could put a desk or something so we have a very short skyscraper just for the office area but let's see what happens so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out the placement of this I know I'm going to put it in a corner so it can't be in the exact middle so let's just randomly place it in now when I design I don't really have a major plan as in I haven't sketched out the exact space or I haven't worked out the exact space that anything is supposed to be in and I don't work with a digital designer. So I start off basically uh, what I'm doing now is to work out the basic layout of the building and then I build up from there. So let's see if we do something like that, that works. Uh, we can put one by two bricks here to form the column and uh, I've got some base plates, mini base plates that I could put like that as the floors to stack them up and this can be a base as well but what I need to figure out I think is I'm gonna count if I have even space so that's two four six eight 
10, 12, 14. So maybe I can go up almost to the front. Let's see how much space. I have some pieces for a roof. Let's use this. And let's say this should be the roof and it should go all the way into the base plate. So what I'm figuring out now, why it's important is I want to use as little pieces as possible for the roof. So if I can take one particular piece uh, and have that for the entire width or the length of the roof, that is perfect. Otherwise, you have to join plates. And that's why I try to make it even numbered as well. If it's even numbered, which is what standard plates are, I don't have to worry about you know, adding in a one by something plate just to make it uh, an odd number if that's the size of my building. So what I want to do here is I'm going to push everything back by one stud. So that means if I have a roof area over here, see, that fits perfectly. If not, early on, it was protruding out. So that's one thing I've kind of figured out. Let's put a base for this. So let's add this here and put this here like that. Now, I do need to raise this up to the same height. So let's use some 1x4 plates. And that's just so that we have symmetry of height. And that'll be important later if we're going to add more floors or something like that. All right, so this is kind of the basis of my tower. What I'm going to do, in fact, well, to get in, this should be a door. So let's look for a door piece here. Okay, that makes more sense. That almost looks like an elevator of sorts. Let's put another piece here. And this becomes like the first floor. And let's replicate the first floor by putting more frames, a door, well, I guess, yeah, that will be here. Now, the reason why I'm not putting it here, one, it's going to take up a lot of space and I will basically have only two studs to work with. Second, I intend to put one by two columns of sorts here. So if I take a one by two column like that, see, that fills in the space. And then maybe I can put plates here or something. We'll see what happens. So we won't worry about this. We can always change things as we go along. Okay, notice uh, there's the plate here. So what that means is I have to put another one by four plate here to level it up. So now that, see, makes sense because now everything is on the same level as they should be. Let's put this over here. And this one as well, I will need a one by four plate. By the way, this is how I keep my plates. Like for the one by four plates, so one by three plates, I stack them like that and we can stack them high. So it's just easier to find and I can take them as uh, one clump. So that one by four plate, goes here to level up this window that's pretty good and let's do one more obviously there's no space to put any stairs uh, otherwise how is one going to go up and i really hate uh, you know, multiple levels of Lego buildings which do not have stairs or ladders or any way to get up. And you see that in a lot of the creator style buildings, they are open back, which is bad enough. And then they don't put stairs or ladders, they expect people to fly or teleport up. So I really, that's a pet peeve of mine, okay? One of the pet peeves of the modern sets or at least the smaller creator three-in-one style sets. But even the bigger sets like the hospital, the fire station and the police station, there's no way for those cops or bad guys to go up and down the building especially for a hospital right you have a gurney you need to push a patient up you can't expect to hoist them up by you know rope so if i want to do something here i will need to put in a ladder or something but you know what i've got a better idea this is not going to be an office building in the sense that i'm not going to have minifix working inside because that looks like a jail more than anything else these will be glass display units because remember, this is an interior design company. So it makes perfect sense to have some kind of very uh, swanky and stylish looking displays. So these are all individual display cabinets. So what I can put is all kinds of little small builds that represents an interior designer. So different furniture, different home fittings and whatnot. And that would make sense. 
Now for the top, we're all leveled up, which means that if I do have a roof, let's say this, this can go off and that will kind of be my roof to hold everything in. And it still makes sense the doors because you need to reach in, or at least the minifigures are going to change the displays as they need. So again, we'll worry about that later. Let's think about the rest of the build now. So what I'm going to do, and I can see it here in my mind already, I'm just going to build around. So this will be my office building. And this is going to be like a back porch area, which maybe we can add some kind of decoration. Obviously, it's not big enough for a car or vehicle, but we'll, we'll see what happens. So let's use bricks. And I've got a whole bunch of white bricks here, courtesy of the Lego pick a brick wall. Now, for these corners, let's... I can do something like that. And let me see if I have another set of 1x3 bricks. I'm pretty sure I do. Now, generally, when you guys build mocks, how do you guys go about doing it? I generally have the parts that I think I'll be using around or ready to use and then that makes it easier for me to build rather than to search for the exact same part or the exact part I need when I do need it. Okay, if this is a back porch, I need a door here. So let's figure out where the door will be. Okay, so I've got a door here. So the door can be, say, somewhere here. Okay, so now I need to kind of connect this, maybe like, like that. That looks pretty good. And then there's kind of a flow between this black tower and the building. Now over here, should we do the same thing? So maybe it looks something like that. That's, that's, that's actually pretty interesting. But then there's this gap here. So maybe we'll do this or we can do this. This will save space because if I do it uh, this way, what I personally like about this is that it creates this indentation, which can be very interesting for a wall. But the problem is you also eat into the space of the building itself. Hmm. So what should I do? I would say let's go for the interesting. I mean, this is kind of a mock-up guide, so I think we can take some liberties. So let's do this all right so let's do something like that and then i would build a wall this way got some one by six bricks over here and maybe i could replicate it on this side as well so if if i do something like that that can be quite interesting so we need a main door which would be somewhere here yeah, why don't we do this feature that assumes I have enough of the 1x3 bricks. Here are a couple more of the 1x3 bricks. So I'm going to replicate that design. Well, it should be this way. Yep, that works. And then this would be here. Well, okay, here's the thing. Because of this design, notice I'm not offset over here. If I really wanted this should be close up here because this is all the way to the edge and that's just due to the way of the design so maybe this can be some kind of a flower bed or something but then there's one here and two here not perfect uh okay why don't we change this part then and we do all the way to the end purposely so maybe this can be the nice cool area and this is just a bit more plain. Okay, why don't we just do that and again, see what happens. Okay, so that's so here's an issue because I've offset by one. If I do this, I'm going to have a lot of need for a one by one brick, which I personally don't like to do in builds if I can help it. So let's, let's if I do this way, yeah, I'm not happy with this either. So let's stick to this and I'll just do this straight. So this won't have a corner brick. This literally would just come in straight here. Okay, I still have an odd number here, but that's all right. Got lots of these one by three bricks. And 
this is kind of my layout. So that's basically my process for a lot of the mocks I do. I, I work out a basic layout and I want to know the area space first. And I do that, you know, before I design the rest of the building. I do have a concept of the building in a sense, uh, at least what the color scheme is and if I want any special design feature. One thing I've mentioned in mocks before is you should always have some kind of central design feature that you can build your mock around, whether it's a 3D sign, whether it's a piece of equipment or a design feature like this. In this case, this this tall skyscraper or skyscraper in relation to the building, this tall multi-level display cabinet of sorts. So that's my central design feature. Now, central design feature doesn't mean it has to be the center of the build. It just means that's the thing that you uh, see when you first see the build, the most attractive feature or distinctive feature of the build. So to me, this works. I now want to build this up. Remember, I do have this uh, concept of using a lot of glass windows. So I will be putting windows in. And let's just kind of figure out where these windows will go now. Let's have two here. And can we squeeze in two here? I guess we could squeeze in two if we do the, nope, we can't. So we squeeze in one here and we can squeeze in one. Could we squeeze in two? Nope, we couldn't squeeze in two. So that's basically how our windows would look like in relation to the build. I think that works, but I don't just want to build it up. Remember, this is an interior design firm. So the concept of the build just does in a way guide me to the design of the build in the sense that that's why I chose to do this, you know, inward uh, in step with these corner bricks because it's more interesting. And as an interior design firm, clients who come to this firm would expect you to have a more interesting and well-designed building, not just on the inside because you're interior designer, but on the outside as well. This is part of the brand, right, of the business. So to me, this interior design firm must have a very stylish looking building, something you might not expect from a normal office building, but definitely from some creative sorts. So I'm gonna work with a lot of indented or uh, protruding windows, meaning I want to set the windows either in or out. I've taught this technique before in one of my previous mock videos. You can check out the link in the card above or in the description. And basically that's using jumper plates to create an instep or offset of the windows. And why don't we do it for the door as well? So let's gather some stuff, move some bricks out of the way and get some jumper plates. I'm going to be using these one by two jumper plates. Let's start off with the door and we'll just place these over the base plate like this. Now, I like this technique because it's a fairly easy technique. Jumper plates are fairly easy to get. In fact, uh, I got a lot of these one by two jumper plates from a recent pick a brick haul from a Lego store. So you can see this offsets the door or the frame or whatever you want to, to build by half a stud, which gives more angles. Now, if you want to make a build more interesting, uh, you create angles, as many different angles. Anytime you have anything just completely straight or flush, it is very boring. So remember, one rule of design is to create detail and detail through removing flat surfaces, you want reliefs and a 3D feel. So let's do this for the windows as well. Okay, so that works. What I need to do later is to add another level of these jumper plates. And there's a reason, because remember, you have now offset these windows by half a stud, half a stud forward. I need to create studs, half a stud back so that I can build on top of it. If not, if you just now continue building directly from that, you are going to get completely offset walls and you can't build your roof properly on top. So. The trick to do that is basically to take jumper plates once again and you could place them back onto the window sills or window frames or the door frames. But in this case, you're gonna push back by half a stud. Let me just do one uh, to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Basically this jumper plate is placed back compared to the bottom ones. All right, so. See, these are the bottom ones which are placed forward to push the window out. However, to make this, uh, the top stud of the window back in line with the rest 
of the wall, you now need to put these jumper plates back. So you can see that's front and this is back. So this now lines up these jumper plates with these studs from these bricks and allowing us to build the rest of the wall over the frames. Okay, but before I do continue to do that, I really need to figure out how to build the rest of the building. So let's remove some of these because we aren't using all 1x3 bricks and there's a reason for that and the reason is stability. If I just use all these bricks to form a column and there's nothing to lock it in place, it's very easy for these to pop out or get knocked off. So what I need to do is create layers and I'll do that with some 1x3 regular bricks and some 1x2 bricks which I have over here. So I'm going to mix them up. I mean, if you really want to talk about uh, being, I will call it perfect, but being really strong, you want to do everything alternated. In this case, I'm doing a one by three and a one by one stud. So now I'm going to do a two by two, a one by two, and a one by two brick. So two one by two bricks. And I'm creating that same L-shaped pattern, but because I've used three different style of bricks from the one by three corner brick, to the 1x3 brick and the 1x1 brick and the two 1x2 bricks, I've now created these overlapping layers over the joints. And now this is really strong. It's almost impossible to uh, pull it out. Even if this model drops, probably this section will still remain intact. And I'm gonna continue this alternating build fashion. And that goes up flush to the top. Well, it's not really flush. As you can see, this is one plate down and that's because it's been offset by the two jumper plates. So I need to add another one by four plate over just like that. And this will line up my window perfectly. So this is important because when I want to build over it later on, this is in line. So I'm gonna do the same for here as well for this corner. Alright, so I will have to build higher again because of this, but let's go all around. I will need more 1x1 one one bricks for this column over here, or maybe I can even cheat and use a column piece. These are 1x1 one one column pieces, so these are solid. Uh, I personally don't like to use these because I find there's a stability issue, but you know, they do save space because oh, they do space, they do save bricks, I mean. So I am going to use that column piece over here. This will have to be raised, so I'll need one more brick later on. But again, we'll worry about that later. So let's add on the jumper plates to this. All right, so I've added all these, but I need to flush these out. So I do need these plates for this window over here. Let's see if I've got a longer plate. I think I've, that's too long. So I'll have to brick it up with a one by two plate and a one by six. Or I could use two one by four plates, but let's not. Now the reason why I'm opting to use a one by six and a one by two plate instead of two one by four plates, it's just so that there's an overlap between these two windows. So it's now uh, considered, I guess, one unit. So again, just for stability. All right, so now I have to build up. Let's so build this up over here. And okay, now we come to this part. Now we're gonna talk about stability once again. So I could, of course, put a one by four plate or a brick like that, but you wouldn't want to do that, why? because these are all loose bricks, you want a brick that can overlap. Or if you don't have long bricks, if you're using a 1x4 brick, you have to do an overlap like that. You're overlapping over the joints of bricks and parts. So that's what I'm gonna do. But I do have actually a long brick, in this case a 1x6 brick, so I can do that. So notice how this one long brick locks all these bricks. And the same thing for this, I don't have such a super long brick, but I can do that and use a 1x4. And I do a visual check. Okay, I have overlapped over joints. So that's good, nice and solid. I have to go one more layer and that will lock everything over here. So I have to revisit this. Now notice I did this as a column. It's not much choice 
because that's all the space I have now should I or do I need to put a 1x2 and a 1x1 not really it makes no difference in my opinion to this column so since after bricks I'll just use all of these together now I'm gonna lock so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lock this corner first with a, another 1x3 brick like that now how do I decide what I should lock I look for the most number of joints so notice this is one loose part this is one loose part and this is one loose part so there are three loose parts that should be locked together over here we just have two loose parts because there's this door frame and there's this stack of one by three bricks so i personally at least again <laughs> there's no school where i learned this uh, but my design spidey sense tells me I should lock the loosest parts together first And maybe this is something I developed because I designed theatrical illusion props for stage and magicians and theatre And I work a lot with wood and metals and a lot of joints Joining is all part of, you know, putting props together So I always look for the loose components first and secure them first And then I go with the less loose components so That allows me to put a 1x4 here and I can put a one by two. Okay, now as I'm building this up, I'm already thinking about decorations. And I'm thinking I should have a light or something here, which means that this should be a modified brick. So I'm gonna change that out now because I have a modified brick somewhere. So modified brick with a stud in front. And this is about the right height. Ideally, I want it actually inside here. But let's see if, if I can be lazy and just do this. Yeah, so that isn't so nice. Because imagine if I want to put some kind of light that hangs out, it just doesn't look so nice closer to the edge. We want to put it on the inside. That means I have to open this up and rebuild this section. There you have it. And now I have something to put a, a lamp or something. But now I'm thinking, maybe this is too short. So what you need to do, you need to look for a minifig. Let's look for a minifig. Okay, here we have uh, Mr. Spy. He's already eyeing the newly constructed building so that he can brick in. So he's going to check. Yeah, well, if it's, I think he can go one higher. Because if it's this height, if the lamp hangs down, he's going to knock his head. Thank you very much, Mr. Spy. So let's open this up. That would probably work. And once again, I have to lock this in place. Now, notice this is a one by six. I don't just want to put another one by six on top because that can just fall off. So let's use a one by four here. So there you have it, the structure of the house or the office building. So the only thing I would mention at this point would be this feels a bit dull because if I add a roof, Let's get a plate here as an example if I were to put a roof like that oh and I see the issue here now look if I put a roof here it's not gonna cover ah, so I've screwed myself over remember I talked about not wanting to add plates I just messed myself up so whoopsie daisy what are we gonna do now Okay, so what was I talking about? I was talking about the fact that I wanted this plate to just, just cover everything nicely like that. Now the problem is this. Notice this wall here. This obviously doesn't cover here. So, but I can add it here. That's not a problem. So I think that's still fine. That can overlap here. So that's still fine. Now we come to here. There's no support, see? And I would have to add, if I want, an extra 1x2 brick. Oh, and look, there's actually a gap here. So I did screw up big time. Okay, I'm going to rebuild this section. And I'm going to make it such that I'm going to recess this wall inside. Uh, like this. So this may not be a corner block. So let's see what happens. So I've rebuilt this and we're back in action. 
So we've got nice, now a little indent here, which is actually pretty nice because, uh, again, you get that whole, uh, I guess, indentation, so to speak. I can see a potential problem already here, but I'll address it in just a bit. Everything else looks uh, pretty decent. And if we do the roof test, yeah, that works. So it's important, you see, to do the roof test earlier in the build uh, so that in case you screw up like I did, you can rebuild it uh, before you complete the build. Okay, I said I mentioned uh, I see a problem. Now, this is a problem. See, I need to fill in this space. And let me show you by using a bunch of one by two bricks now. This will fill up the space there. So that looks pretty nice. So I'm going to fill up the space over here. What's the problem? And you can see... There's now no support right here. So there are two things I can do. I can rebuild this once again and put in a column. I can just change out this brick here to a two by two brick so that the support, but then you get this sharp angle. So what I'm gonna do, well, this is great actually, it allows me to showcase another technique. And this technique involves using this inverted 1x2 brick. Now, let me just say this now. I purposely messed this up so that I could show you this technique. It was all part of my master plan. So here's the technique. Anytime you want to or you need to create some kind of additional brick space, but you don't want to have a sharp angle uh, as, as I demonstrated here, you can use this inverted brick. What this inverted brick does is it creates a nice angle so that it looks more deliberately or more designed. You don't have that just a sharp angle. And this then allows me to build up. So if I were to subsequently add all this here, that's, that's, that works. I think it looks like part of the design. One thing I will do is I'm going to do it maybe one brick up so that's in line with this. Let's see if that makes a difference. It may or may not. So let's just put in a brick for now just as a standby. Now does this look better? Now to the untrained eye maybe there's no difference but okay I can't tell the difference can you? I will go with one brick up like that, just so that it's not so close to this door. There's more space. So haven't figured that out, I will need to do something here. I need to lock this brick into place. And first, let me rebuild this part here. That's easy enough. This goes here. Let's put another two. Now, I want to make sure that this loose brick is not loose by itself. So I'm going to put a 1x3 brick. Okay, so here's the issue. I need to keep this space for the roof, which means that if I use this technique, the problem is everything is built on this one stud, which is not good for stability, which means that I have to rebuild. I can't do this technique, I have to build this out. And at the same time, I want to shift this door here so it's not so close to uh, this display. What does that mean? Redo. And there we have it. So I went through the entire process so that I could show you that Lego is not so easy to design. But I think we've got it. The basic structure is now up. I've got the ability to put up the columns as I need. And I can also put my roof in later. So that's good. All right. Everything is as also stable as you can see. I do need to of course complete this part but I think we've got the main structure out. So what do we have to do now? We have to add in these 1x2 bricks which I'll do right now and the idea is just to create columns like that. So that looks pretty good. 
I now have to secure this. So now I'm just looking to make sure they're level and it looks like they're more or less level. And I'm gonna cap everything with this. But you know, to make my life easier, why don't we cap it with something white first? So let's use a couple of these plates. Can you imagine if there are displays inside that would pre look pretty good as some kind of very stylish artifacty looking display. So let's quickly finish this up and basically I'm going to add a layer of, I think we can add a layer of white, although we already have a brick. So you know what I'm going to do instead? Notice this has a black towel. Let's change this from black to white. Remember I said I didn't want a black frame to have direct contact with a roof piece. So just by changing that, I've helped create a buffer space. A small point, but I think it adds to the overall design. Now, in hindsight, when I look at this design now, I feel this window is too close to the door. So guess what? Redo. And we're back nothing to it all right let's add on some towels uh, to create the roof so i'm going to add the jumper plates now you don't need to use one by four jumper plates you can just use a one stud but i just find this a bit easier so let's place it there and there for now and let's just add this up again i'm using the towels to hold things in place so let's use a one by eight maybe that holds everything in place and there we have we have towed it up so that we now can build a roof and place it on top so let's work on the roof so i'm now going to build a roof for this section of the office but i do need to build an access to get to the roof because you have to imagine that minifigs have to be able to access these displays in order to change them when they need to so i'm going to use a couple of plates To create the roof so if we work out the size of the roof it would be that would be too big that has to go in it would look something like that and that's why i have these two here as well to create an excess in terms of a skylight so let's build the roof first or put it together and this is quite straightforward now that's why i made quite a big point about measuring the roof and trying to make it fit the building uh, as close as possible without having to add additional plates. That just makes your life much easier when building the roof. If not, the roof may need multiple parts and multiple uh, one by something plates to hold together. And then the roof doesn't become as structurally sound as well. So let's build or put this roof together. And we're just gonna plate the underside to hold the pieces together. And this is quite a standard roof technique. So let's just do that now. So here we have the roof done and we'll just do a check to make sure it fits on. Okay, so there's a small issue here again because of the way this is set in. I just need to add plates here so that it would fit on properly like that. So I think the easiest way is to change out these two two by something plates. So we're going to switch in these two by eight plates over the ends here. So let's remove this. That should work now because they should be lined up with the roof and we'll just do a quick test. Yeah, that fits in well. We will have to stabilize uh, this section later on, but that's basically the roof of this building. And there's a hole here. I'm going to add a skylight to it. I've taught the skylight in a separate video tutorial. So check out the link in the card above or in the description and I'll just speed through it right now. So here's the finished roof with the skylight. I've added modified rail plates all around as well as tiles to give it a very complete look. 
Now after I finished this, I've realized uh, several issues that I have to address before we can finish this overall exterior of this build. The first thing is when the roof is on the building, this glass door can't open which means that it's useless and Minifix can't change what's inside. So I will have to take out this window and replace it with these two windows so that at least a window can open up and a Minifix can still you know, kind of climb in and change the display. The next thing is more for proportion, nothing really wrong, but this is too much to the right now that I look at it. I made a mistake earlier, I should have just removed this column and centered this window in the, this particular wall. Finally, I don't really like where this modified brick is. I should actually use a two stud modified brick. That means two studs in front and have a jumper plate so that if I place it over here, I can place a light centered within this column. That's much better. So I'm going to make all these changes and also detail the top of this roof and we would complete this build. And here we have the completed interior designer's office. I made all the necessary changes. I've centered the window, centered this brick over here, changed out the window over there. And everything I think works well. It looks very stylish, very modern, definitely very different from anything I've built. And I think anyone who looks at it can tell this is probably an office or maybe a house of someone really creative. In any case, this build should take about 30 minutes to do but I'm a professional, so I took more than an hour. An amateur would probably take two hours, so I'm definitely a pro. This is just part one of the video. In part two, we will detail both the outside and the inside, and hopefully we can make it really distinct and distinguish it as an interior designer's office. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't, please subscribe to the channel. We've recently added a whole bunch of new subscribers. So thank you and welcome to Small Brick City. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon.